still see. Is everybody ready to go? It's proclaimed the greatest radio show. Welcome, fans, to our Week One Steelers preview. I'm your host, Jim Stella, here with Jay Dash. Dash, we are not doing the recaps this year, just doing the preview shows. That makes the preview show that much more exciting, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, previews are the ones that get the, the views. You know, the recaps really don't get that much, so we're moving on from that. It's a waste of time. Everybody knows what happened. They watched the game. Well, you don't have to convince me not to do it, man. Yeah. <laughs> So the Steelers are taking on the Cleveland Browns in week one at Cleveland. The biggest news right now is Miles Garrett hurt his ankle in practice today. He was sent for an MRI, or they believed he was going to be sent for an MRI when I was listening to the Mark Madden show around 5 o'clock. Uh, that usually means something bad. I read reports already on some of the bigger sites that he could miss multiple weeks. So he's probably not going to play this Sunday. That's a lot easier for Al Villanueva, don't you think? Yeah, but, man, this team does not look good at all right now. The Browns? The Browns. Well, yeah, obviously the Browns. The Steelers look pretty good this season, man. You know, sadly, this is probably the best organizationally the Browns have looked in a long time. Because although their roster is very, very young and they're not going to win a lot of football games, they're building a team the way the head coach wants to see it. And if he does it right, it'll work out, and they should be uh, uh, you know, one of the good teams. They're not going to contend for a Super Bowl because they're the Browns. But they might actually win like nine or ten games one of these seasons here in like ten years. Oh, well, yeah, they're definitely getting younger. They're building up picks. They're trading some of the guys they don't want away. I mean, like you said, that this is a new organization. So uh, things could look better, but right now, man, it just doesn't look good. They're like what they're going to put on the field this weekend. Well, one of their cast-offs, Joe Hayden, he was making $11 million for the Browns. They asked him to cut it to seven. He told them no. They released him, and then he signed with Pittsburgh for $7 million this year. Hayden said he just couldn't take the losing anymore. He needed to get out of there. He wanted to come to a team that has a winning repertoire, and that's definitely the Steelers. He wanted to come to a team that has a chance to win the Super Bowl, and that's definitely the Steelers. He instantly makes this secondary better. And I'm not even saying – that is, I think he's going to be the Joe Hayden where he's making the Pro Bowls. Even 60% of Joe Hayden is better than Ross Cockrell. So this, this secondary definitely got better. They traded for J.J. Wilcox. He's a depth safety who can play in the dime package. So they might not use as much nickel. They might use more dime this year. So the Steelers defense got worlds better with Joe Hayden. The Browns, what did they get? Sammy Coates. <laughs> Yeah, and eventually he should be one of their better options, hopefully, for them because, what, they have Kenny Britt out there. They drafted David Njoku. They have Isaiah Crawwell, who I'm not very high on. I do like Duke Johnson, though. I think this guy can have a big season. Can they get him the ball, not just in the run game, but in the passing game? he got to be a big part of their passing game. And I think you actually did mention earlier this offseason that they're thinking about running him some in the slot, correct? Yes. So that, that could be big for him as well. I think Duke Johnson is a playmaker. They don't have uh, a great receiving core out there. I think he can be something that does help it. Everybody's talking about Sammy Coates and Joe Hayden being able to give their teams now you know, some insight into what the other team does. Do you really buy into that that much? I mean, it helps a little bit, right? But does it really affect anything? Well, I know teams do it. More often than we think, there's a lot of times that teams, when they're going up against someone, especially if it's a big game, if that team releases someone, that the, the opponent will go out and sign them for some reason. So I don't know how much it helps. It, it, to me, it doesn't help that much, but there is a reason that it, it happens a good bit. So Big Ben has won more games in Cleveland than any other Browns QB since I believe it's 1999, maybe even earlier. But it's definitely this era of Browns. Uh, it's just ridiculous what they've done at quarterback, that turnstile that they have. Is Kaiser the answer for them? I'm not saying is he a Hall of Famer or anything, but is he a guy that, that they can actually build a, an offense around and a team around? <sighs> That's a question that has yet to be answered. There's been so many quarterbacks. I, I think 
there's been more Cleveland quarterbacks than Ben Roethlisberger wins in Cleveland. Oh, yeah, there's been over 20 Cleveland quarterbacks. Believe- Big Ben only has, like, 10 wins. <laughs> <laughs> but Believe in it. Cleveland, that's crazy. So, I, I don't know, man. It, you have to wait and see. But hopefully they put a decent line out there that doesn't get him crushed. And you can't give up on him too quick. I mean, that was the problem with the last organization. It, it, the draft these guys, they give them a shot, and then it, they're gone. You know what I mean? you got to stick with it, with your guys. And you've got to stick with your coaches as well. Just take a look at the Steelers, man. Uh, that's the best part about them is they, they keep the staff together as long as possible, you know. And that, that I think that goes a long way. Believe it. And the owner of the Browns came. He was a minority owner with the Steelers, Jimmy Haslam, before he went to Cleveland and purchased that franchise. He's seen it firsthand. So I think that's what he's going to try to do here with Hugh Jackson. Now, will he actually give him the amount of time that he needs is yet to be seen. But it seems like that's the plan because they bought a second round pick basically for 16 million dollars with that brock osweiler trade so they're really getting creative in the way that they do things and they they really do seem like they want to win now as opposed to them just being there because it was a job so what do you think about the browns yeah what do you think about the steelers offense up against the browns it should be i mean it should be a big game we know the steelers uh, offense struggles a little bit on the road, but I still think they should go out there and uh, handle things pretty well. And Le'Veon Bell, I want to see him go out there and make a statement, really, because uh, obviously he, he just came onto the team. He really hasn't got much action. I want to see him go out there and show he, he deserves what uh, the money he wants. Dejan Kovacevic said there is a chance that Bell only sees the ball 10 to 15 times in this football game because of his lack of preparation and that you might see a heavy dose of James Conner. Do you really believe that? Because I don't believe that. I think if Bell goes out there and he's running hard, running well, they're going to just keep giving him the ball. Well, I think it would be a good idea to give James Conner more action than you usually would, to tell you the truth, man. And not just because Le'Veon Bell isn't up to speed yet and he hasn't got the reps he needs it's more because at the end of the season I want to see Le'Veon Bell get less touches when the touches don't mean as much so if Pittsburgh can go up by 13 points or something I'm starting to give James Conner a little bit more carries because I don't want to see Le'Veon Bell go down late in the season because he had 480 touches by week 14. Oh, I totally agree. If they have a big lead, especially against a team like the Browns, that you can sub uh, Connor in there a little bit more than you would in the past. And I definitely agree with you that Bell needs to carry the ball more when it matters and not so much when it doesn't. The Steelers, Tomlin historically has said, I'm going to run my running back so the wheels fall off. So let's hope that doesn't happen with Le'Veon Bell. Because the Steelers need him in the playoffs. Uh, I think that game in New England would have been a whole lot different had he been there. Whether we won or not, I, I don't know. Yeah, the we, game would have been a whole lot different. They wouldn't have won the game. But that's another thing. Everybody says, hey, we need that home field advantage to beat New England. Well, how about having the, the best running back in the league? Yeah, that, they both would help a lot. What do you think about Martavis Bryant coming back? This guy hasn't played football in over a year. Can he come out and produce, or is he going to be rusty? You might see a little bit of rust. I think I think he can still have a big game, though, man. I think he's going to have a good season. I think he's going to be ready for the season. You might see a little bit of rust or whatever, but we only need to see him catch three or four passes, open things up underneath for these other guys, really. That's what I was just going to say. He's really, at least early, is going to just be that deep threat guy. So he's just going to have to pretty much run downfield and catch the football or catch some fade passes in the end zone. Uh, in the red zone he's not going to be asked to run this exclusively crazy route tree early in the year or even late in the year because that's antonio brown's job bryant knows his job push the field back the safeties up off the line of scrimmage make room for levy on bell and if he drops two passes a game it doesn't matter if he's catching four for 95 yards and a touchdown all right let's move to the defense real quick happy birthday to ryan shazier it's his birthday when? Today. This day that we're recording Today, right now? September 6th, 2017, Ryan Shazier's birthday. Very nice. Hopefully for a birthday present, he stays healthy. Please believe. I'd love that. 
this defense is much improved to me. Like I said at the beginning of this episode, Joe Hayden opposite Artie Burns. I've been hearing nothing but good things about Artie Burns from training camp. People have been saying this guy's holding his own against Antonio Brown. If you can hold your own against Antonio Brown, even if you're winning four out of ten matchups against Antonio Brown in practice, you're not going against Brown every week. You know what I mean? You're going against guys who are lesser, so you're going to win more of those matchups. Antonio Brown's one of the best in the league, and from what I've heard, they've pretty much been splitting it 50-50 on who wins the downs. So I'm really excited to see what he can do. I'm hoping Joe Hayden can at least be around 60% of his former self. I like Mitchell and Davis is our, our safeties. Whether Mitchell plays or not is still up in the air. He, he hasn't participated in the preseason. Uh, J.J. Wilcox, he's going to be a good guy. He can come in in the dime package. He's a bigger, stout guy. He can almost be a de facto linebacker. I think the fact that Vince Williams is in there isn't going to hurt the Steelers as much as some people will because I think they're going to take Vince Williams off the field in obvious passing downs. You're going to see a few down linemen. You're going to see Ryan Shazier, and you're going to see a lot of defensive backs, especially since they took uh, a, a position that was desperately in need, and now it might be one of the better positions on that defense as far as depth goes with the additions of Wilcox and Hayden. Yeah, I like what they have defensively, the, at least the looks of it on paper this season, man. I still think the the defensive backs hinges on Hayden. I mean, he wasn't that great last season. He's been injured a lot. He didn't look good in the preseason with Cleveland. So I, I think uh, the way, at least by the end of the season, what we think of this secondary really hinges on that second corner position because really I like everything they – uh, everything else they have in that secondary, especially Sean Davis. I think he can take a big step forward this season, maybe be in the ranks. Well, I already said I think he's the best defensive player on this team. I might be giving him a little bit too much credit already, but I think he can become a uh, perennial pro bowler, really. And up front, it looks really good as well. There, uh, I said earlier this offseason that uh, James Harrison might get more play early in the season, but it looks like they want to play Watt more often and save James Harrison for later in the season from what I heard. So we'll have to see what they do there, but I'm excited to see what happens with Watt as well and see how much he plays here in week one. Yeah, Joey Porter, I don't, I, this isn't a direct quote, but this is basically what he said the last I read of it. We got two young guys on the outside. They're going to play till they can't play anymore. You know, talking about Watt and Dupree getting after that quarterback. Uh, you're going to mix in James Harrison, so I'm not saying you're not. But you really – you don't want to have to mix in James Harrison because then that means your two number one picks on the outside aren't doing what they're supposed to do. So I'm, I'm from the way I interpreted it, as long as Watt and Dupree are playing well – you're going to see a heavy dose of both of them. They should be able to get after the quarterback, and then you'll be able to sneak Harrison in on those more obvious passing downs and kind of almost try to hide him because if you don't know where James Harrison's coming from, you're certainly not going to stop him. People haven't been able to stop him when he's lined up in the same spot and he uses basically the same move every time. He just bull rushes right through you. People couldn't stop him then. If you don't know where he's coming from, he can really wreak havoc. And I think a good year for Harrison this year would be around five to six sacks. But I think they're going to be five to six really big-time sacks at big-time moments when we really, really need them. And I think they could be game-changers for this defense. And I agree with you about Davis. This kid's going to get more picks than anybody else on this defense. Now, he's not going to come out and get 10 or anything like Marcus Peters. Uh, but this guy's a ball hawk on that defense, and he's going to get around the ball. Oh, I think they have to make sure they play Harrison enough for him to be a factor because there was a lot of times last season where he looked like the, still the best player on that defense. I'm not saying he is the best player, but there's a lot of times he looked like the best player on that defense. So make sure you play him enough where he can be a factor. And remember, he comes up big burst Baltimore, so you want to play him those weeks uh, a little bit more as well. But let's move on to some Facebook comments, Twitter comments, or whatever. Marvin Hamilton wants to know who is our starting tight end. He sees Jesse James listed there, but the Steelers went out and traded for Vance McDonald. We didn't even talk about this yet, Dash. Uh, the Steelers never make trades, and they made two big trades and a signing this offseason. Uh, uh, yeah, Jesse James is listed as the starting tight end right now, but to me it's Vance McDonald's job as long as 
he gets uh, a little more acclimated to this offense and does what he's supposed to do because they wouldn't have traded for him if they thought James could do the job. Yeah, I think Vance McDonald, their their thinking is going to be the the number one guy at some point. I don't know if it's going to happen in week one or not. Uh, I think if you get if you get a, a little lead, let's say Vance McDonald doesn't know the whole playbook or whatever, if you get a little bit of a lead, you can get him in there a little bit more as well. I I still have questions about Vance McDonald, though. Uh, it's not like he, this guy's an elite tight end or anything. I think he had the highest drop rate of all tight ends in the league last year. I know he played for a bad team or whatever, but that, that that's no excuse for all the drops. But he is a big guy. He's a quick guy, so... They're hoping he helps out in the passing game. I'm, I do like Jesse James, so I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna say Vance McDonald is definitely gonna turn into the number one guy. I think they're hoping that, but I still have a little bit of faith in Jesse James as well, man. And I'm not completely sold on Vance McDonald. I'm pretty sure McDonald was dropping the ball on purpose because Kaepernick was kneeling for the national anthem. I hope that's true. <laughs> Steelers cor- new cornerback Joe Hayden bought the number 21 from Robert Golden. Would you buy a number from a player if you were an NFL player? Uh, I le- I think they got to do a better job managing their money as a whole. I'm not picking <laughs> on any player. So, uh, I mean, th- that's up to you. It, it depends on your financial situation and how you are preparing for the future. If you have your future set up, then go ahead and buy that number. But if you have eight cars that cost $200,000 in your driveway, uh, I'd keep that money. Yeah, I never really understood it. I know the numbers have sentimental value to some people, but Hayden didn't wear this number 21 in Cleveland. I don't know what number he wore in college. Some people are speculating it's because he wants to wear the same number as Deion Sanders. But if I'm Robert Golden, I'm taking the money all the time because Golden's a fringe player. I mean, he's been on the roster a few years now, but he he is in no way, shape, or form solidified You know, his spot on a roster every year. He's got to scratch and claw for it. So I'm taking the money if I'm Golden, but if I'm Hayden, I'm not buying a number. Come on, man. Just wear another number. You know what Golden did, too? All he did was go and take number 20 because they put Cam Sutton on IR, so you lose rights to your number. <laughs> so he went and stole Sutton's number. Nice. It's hilarious. Come on now, guys. Would you have been mad if the Steelers let the Dolphins play at Heinz Field this week? No, I thought it had been pretty cool. Why would I be mad? Oh, man. all Almost all the people in this Facebook group that I'm in were furious. You can't let these bleeping dolphins come in here. This is our home. Only the Steelers play here. And I, I, you know, tried to mention to these people that every time we play a home game, another team does play there. So only the Steelers. That That's not a true statement. <laughs> but they just kind of told me that I was an a-hole and kept ranting and raving how two neutral teams shouldn't be allowed there. These These cities are, like, floating away into the ocean right now because of these hurricanes. It, people are worried about whether or not a, a neutral team's getting on the field. It's getting out of hand on social media, Dash. Yeah, that's all garbage to me. I, it'd be nice to have another team come in. Just have another NFL game at your stadium. It'd be great to have that. I, I don't see the big problem. And the, there's a reason they had to postpone this game. And now that, that you don't want them here in Pittsburgh, i got to have Mike Evans on my fantasy team play 16 freaking weeks in a row. Yeah, what's up with that? I mean, that's not cool at all. And I I know you you do what you got to do and whatever, but I can't believe they're going to make these two teams play 16 weeks in a row. And then if they make the playoffs, they got to make it all the way through. Like, that's crazy. That's going to be hard. What if it was the Houston Texans that needed our stadium? Would anybody care? I I don't know. I mean, some of these Steelers fans are crazy. They're ripping Terry Bradshaw all of a sudden in this group for no reason. He didn't even do anything right now. People are calling him an a-hole. Pretty funny. (laughs) Is Is that it for the comments? That's all we got this week. There's not too many good ones because the season hasn't started. It's mostly just memes about James Harrison. All right, we'll move on then. Three questions about the game I got for you here, man. Number one, there's still some questions about the Steelers run defense I'm not so sure how prevalent it will be this week seeing that they're going up against one of the weaker teams in the NFL team would they win one like one game last year yep and they got lucky so how good is this 
defense going to be? I'll say over or under 57 yards rushing from the Cleveland Browns. I'm going to say under, man, because I'm big on this defense this year. I was big on the linebackers last year, and they got even better this year with the addition of J.J. Watt and the fact that Jarvis Jones got cut, who also got cut from Arizona, and he's he's pretty much going to retire now because he's garbage. Uh, But the Steelers' front seven, you got Hargrave to it and Hayward. Hayward's going to be healthy now. Tewitt's just about to get an extension. It's going to be any day before the beginning of this season. He's going to be primed and ready to play. You got Shazier, Dupree, Watt, all young, big physical football players. Williams, his strength is against the run. He's exposed when it comes to the passing game. So I, I really think the run game is going to get even better than it was. I think Kaiser's going to struggle also, which really helps the run game, or the run defense at least. Uh, this Cleveland offense, it's going to take them a while to get going and gel. A lot of young guys, a lot of moving pieces. I think the Steelers' defense has a pretty easy day, and I really think they have an easy day against the run. The Browns are going to be behind, so they're going to be throwing it. Check downs to Duke Johnson all day. Two rookies, TJ Watt and James Conner, both should see some decent playing time in this game. Does either one of them make a splash play? I think Watt is going to have big plays all year. Uh, I'm not saying every game, uh, but he showed it in his first preseason game. I know it's just preseason and everything, but it was his first NFL game. He came out there. He got two sacks, kind of coverage sacks, but he was still in the right place at the right time. The the Steelers say they're going to play this guy and play him often, so he's going to have a lot more chances to make a play than James Conner will. So I'm going to go with J.J. Watt. T.J. Watt. Did I say J.J. Watt? Oh, you said J.J. Oh, that's just because I love me some J.J. Watt. Yes, T.J. Watt. Thank you for correcting me. I think he comes out and gets sacked, honestly. What about Connor? Do you think he finds the end zone on a short run or anything? Uh, You know, maybe if the Steelers are up big because Bell sat out for most of the preseason, he'll get some opportunities. But really, if they use Levy on the way they normally do, Connor will be lucky to touch the ball ten times. So that's really just why I'm picking T.J. over Connor. How about Terrell Watson? Any action? Nah. I mean, he might be our kick returner or punt returner, but he, I, don't, I don't think he's going to get the ball on offense. All right, last question. Joe Hayden versus Sammy Coates. Will we see it? <laughs> I think so. Uh, if, if Hayden really has slowed down, like people have said, especially some of the Browns people since he's left, they're going to try to go right after him. Coates is – instantly the fastest player on their offense so it would make sense to line them up and say run straight down the field and see if Hayden can keep up with you the good news for Hayden is Sammy Coates couldn't catch a cold if he was surrounded by 55 people with Ebola shingles the bird flu the swine flu AIDS can't anything this dude can't catch anything and his fingers are mangled from last year dude's garbage so it doesn't matter if he makes it past Hayden. He's not going to catch anything anyway. Dang, he's garbage now. Yeah, he's garbage. I didn't like Sammy Coates before. If you go back to our draft segment, I didn't like him because he dropped 20% of the passes that were thrown his way in college. The dude's a dropping machine. Well, you did say he'd have 1,000 yards. Rate. You said he'd have 1,000 yards last year. Yeah, I predicted 1,000 yards because I didn't think he would only have two catches over the last – 11 games or whatever it was he would have had a thousand yards had he actually stayed on his pace through the first five games is that true i don't even know if that's true might be true i mean he had he ended with like 500 and something yards and he only got uh, literally two catches after those first two games so i'm pretty sure he would have got there if he stayed on that that pace all right key to victory uh just mistake free football You're definitely a better team than the Browns offensively and defensively and on special teams. I like uh, Jordan Berry and obviously Boswell has been lights out for pretty much, uh, you know, his whole time here. The one thing you want to watch out for is our long snapper. It's no longer Greg Warren. It's not the guy we drafted. It's some guy we signed away from Arizona. So, you know, maybe a bad snap here or there, but it's just mistake free football. You might, you know, you might have a turnover, but don't do it in the red zone. You know what I mean? Play right, play to your strengths, be the Pittsburgh Steelers. You don't have to score 40 to beat the Browns, but it would be really nice to see the offense come out and put up 30 and look comfortable. Uh, But that's pretty much it. Just know you're the better team. Don't overlook the Browns either. I'm not saying the Browns are some punk-ass team that are only going to win one game. They might win four this year. 
and we don't want one of them to be against us. Yeah, the key to victory really should be just be ready for week one this season, unlike the past few seasons. But in-game, I would say as long as you're able to shut down Isaiah Crawwell and Duke Johnson, which I think they'll be able to do, things will be really tough for the rookie quarterback out there. So I, I really think they'd have no chance if they can't get that run game going, which I really don't think they will. And I think they have no chance. Even if they did have the run game going, I'd probably still think Pittsburgh wins. But there's one thing, if there's one thing I want to see in this game, uh, I, I want to see that defense shut that run game down. Yeah, I want to see the defense shut them down. I'm not saying shut them out. It's hard to shut a team out nowadays just because of garbage time and whatnot. But I want to see this defense take this Browns offense and just strangle them throughout the game because they really should only because the Browns are young. I mean, none of these guys have really ever played together or played in the NFL. So I'm not knocking these guys. They could end up to be a, a decent team here in a few years, but not this year. There's no way this Browns team should beat the Steelers this year as long as the Steelers play their way. So what's your prediction? Going to go with Pittsburgh here, man. I I hate to predict a blowout. Here, I got the numbers here. and Let me look, look them up real quick. The Steelers have played the Browns in week one six times in their history. They're four and two in those six games. The most recent one was September 7th of 2014. The Steelers won in Pittsburgh 30 to 27. That was a close game. Dang. <laughs> the two before that in 2007 and 1999, that dates back to the current Browns team. The Steelers won 34 to seven and 43 to nothing. This Browns team isn't much better than that 1999 team that the Steelers beat them 43 to nothing. Now, I know the Steelers had some good defenses and whatnot back then, and it might not be there now. Still picking Pittsburgh. I think they even cover the eight-and-a-half-point spread that I've been seeing. I'm going to say Pittsburgh 32 to 14. 32 to 14. That's pretty yep. much a blowout. I'm going to say much. it's going to be a little bit closer I don't think Pittsburgh gets to 30. I don't like how they play in week one. Uh, they're not quite as good on the road, obviously. We mentioned a million times in the past. Uh, they, they almost get to 30. 27, and Cleveland doesn't score a touchdown. I'll say they score 12 points. Though. They get four field goals. Four field goals, eh? Four field goals. That might even be too much. Maybe 27-9. I don't know. 27-9, 27-12. I'll stick with 27-12, and I'll say James Conner gets into the end zone twice. Oh, taking away fantasy points from me. You trying to get me to 0-1 already? Please believe me. Hey, I got Big Ben, Martavis Bryant, and Le'Veon Bell on my fantasy team. Yeah, let's need, hope that game doesn't need get those postponed. Stealer points. You know I'm going to be picking big victories all year. <laughs> yeah, well, you're not going to be playing Big Ben that much. Are you starting him no. this week, though? Oh, yeah, you got to believe you're starting him against uh, the Browns. Come on now. Cam Newton's my other quarterback, and he's been beat up. How many touchdowns does he throw? More than two? Big Ben? Yeah. Yeah, he's going to get three. Three touchdowns? I think A.B. gets two, and, and Martavis gets one. I'll say James Conner gets two on the ground. Big Ben gets one to Antonio Brown, and you're beat. Mm. Mm. Yeah, if that happens, I am Pete. <laughs> All right, wrap it up. Fans, questions, comments, hit us up on Twitter at bet underscore the spread. Hit me up on Twitter at bet Jim to win. Check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash bet the spread. Keep coming back to YouTube. Click subscribe. Share it with your friends. Steeler love dash week one. They don't even show the game where I live.